Hey guys, what is up? Panther here, and now that the new Mordekaiser has been out for quite a few patches, we've had a chance to see how to play him and how to play against him, so I wanted to do a guide covering that. This should be your one stop to give you the basic rundown on Mordekaiser, everything you need to know about him in order to start learning him and start learning how to play against him. If you haven't already, make sure to go check out our website, GameLeap.com. There we have hundreds of videos organized into a quick and easy to use courses system. We keep Keep the website as up to date as possible with the current patch, constantly swapping in and out videos as the game changes. Now with all this being said, let me explain some of the things that you might not know about Mordekaiser's basic abilities. I'm sure you've all seen them and know what they look like, but let me explain some of the things behind the scenes that you don't quite see. The first thing of note is Mordekaiser's passive. See, the passive will trigger with any combination of three either basic abilities or auto attacks. It doesn't matter how he combos these, what order, or what basic abilities, he just needs three of them. The passive will also refresh every time he lands an auto or basic ability. However, the passive will not refresh itself. So, if you are fighting Mordekaiser, you can look to kite out the passive if you're not hard winning trades. As long as he's unable to land an additional auto or basic ability, that passive will fall off. On the other side of things, if you're playing as Mordekaiser, make sure you're landing additional autos or abilities to keep that passive going, as it is a lot of damage over time. This passive also works and refreshes off of large monsters too, meaning that jungle Mordekaiser can be viable. The next thing of note is that Mordekaiser's Q will deal increased damage if it only hits one single target. So this means for Mordekaiser, if you are looking to do additional damage to the enemy champion, try and hit them outside of the creep wave, and if you're just looking to stack your W, then you should just hit as many creeps as possible and a champion. Speaking of Mordekaiser's W, there are two things to keep in mind when using this spell. The first thing is that the shield can be reactivated in order to give you health equal to up to 50% of the shield's value. The second thing is the shield decays over time, so this means you want to be timing your shields properly, and if your intention is just to heal yourself, you should be instantly recasting your W in order to give you as much health as possible. Keep in mind that if you can use the full shield value in a skirmish, then you should, and you should not be looking to convert it into health. This is because the shield value is a lot more than the heal value is, meaning you'll have a lot more effective health at the end of the trade if you're able to use the whole shield. This is the biggest mistake that I see new Mordekaiser players making. They will always convert the shield into health and that's not right. Oftentimes in a fight you want to be using as much of the shield value as possible and then convert whatever is left into health. There's also two things of note with Mordekaiser's E. The first thing of note is that Mordekaiser's E does not have to be cast at a set range. He can cast it anywhere between minimum and maximum range, resulting in different pull lengths. You can use this ability right on top of yourself while running away in order to pull targets away from you if that's what you want to do. You can also use it very close to you to pull targets through you. The second thing of note is that this ability grants magic penetration, though it's not all too useful since you're going to be building Conqueror anyways. Mordekaiser also does not really lack any magical damage, so the magic pen isn't really something that you notice all that much, if at all. Now Mordekaiser's ultimate is the most interesting thing about his kit. His ultimate forces a 1v1 between the target and himself. Now, Mordekaiser's ultimate can be cleansed via QSS or true cleansing abilities such as Rengar's Empowered W and Gangplank's Oranges. Cleanse does not work on this ability, so don't be taking it against Mordekaiser. Mord's ult will steal 10% of the basic stats of the target instantly. The only basic stats that it doesn't steal are movement speed and mana. You cannot use Mordekaiser's ultimate to execute somebody, however, it will just bring them down to 1 HP instead. Mordekaiser's ult will also completely remove everything that's on the map currently and just leave them in a 1v1. This excludes towers, however. This means that all projectiles, pets, minion autos, all of them will just disappear instantly. This ability is coded very uniquely and has so many different interactions and I'm not going to cover them all in this video, but for the most part, the death realm and the normal realm are completely separate. Now, for the most part, in the early lane phase, you're just going to want to chill and wait until you're level three before going for any hard trades. You're gonna wanna start with Q so you have the ability to push the wave and farm from range. This is 
uses in every single situation. Don't really ever start E or W, otherwise you're not going to be able to play the lane at level one. Now trading is okay early, but make sure you don't overcommit as you are going to be very susceptible to both tower damage and minion damage so make sure you don't overcommit just play safe bully them off the wave when possible and just focus on pushing for that level three now once you do have your level three you pretty much sustain through any lane in existence with Dorn's shield second win and revitalize paired with your w even if you do take a bad trade you can just stand back on the wave and let your Dorn shield and your w's heal you make sure you're getting as much exp early into the game as possible teleporting back to the wave whenever you have to. Remember, for a lot of matchups against Mordekaiser, the only way you can lose is if the other champion gets level 6 before Mordekaiser can. So EXP advantage is a huge thing here. Using teleport to guarantee as much EXP as possible is a very, very, very good thing to be doing on both sides of this matchup. If you do opt for a combat spell over teleport, then make sure you have good waves before your basing. Once you hit level 6 on Mordekaiser, you're going to want to start to look for an all-in right away. Mordekaiser's level 6 is one of the most potent in the game, and you can 1v1 almost any champion at level 6. Now, the biggest mistake that I see with Mordekaiser's level 6 all-in is a lot of players will just hit 6 and then press R on the enemy champion. You don't want to do this. You first want to make sure that your W is up and stacked reasonably high. After that, make sure you've landed an ability or an auto attack on on the enemy champion before alting them. This is important because it only requires you to land two more autos or spells on the enemy champion in order to trigger your passive. Once you do trigger your passive, it's pretty much game over for any champion, save a select few. Generally, the only champions you're going to want to stay away from at level 6 are the duelists, champions like Rennington. If you alt Rennington as Mordekaiser at level 6, Rennington isn't trapped in there with you, you're trapped in there with Rennington. Other picks like Trundle and Fiora can also beat you in a 1v1 at level 6 just because their dueling capability is so good, so watch out for those champions. For pretty much any other meta pick in the top and mid lane, you're going to be walking away with a kill after your level 6 all in if you do it properly. You can use this lead to snowball your lane and be able to completely bully the enemy laner out of lane, even being able to net yourself even more kills if they so much as misstep by an inch. Now I would definitely recommend playing the lane very reserved as Mordekaiser when your ultimate is down, and the reason behind this is this is the only time that you can be ganked and killed as Mordekaiser. If you already have a solo kill on Mordekaiser, then it's very very scary for the enemy jungler to gank you because you have the opportunity to just turn the gank 1v2, alt one of the players, kill them, and then kill whoever's left. Oftentimes, they need to bring three people top lane if the Mordekaiser is ahead and the only way for you to die is if you don't have ultimate to turn a 1v2. For that reason, I recommend just freezing and playing back on the wave until your ultimate is back up, in which case you start playing more aggressive again. As Mordekaiser, it's generally just good to freeze for as long as you can, as the only thing that can really stop you from snowballing is trying to tower dive. Towers are the only thing that go into the death realm with the enemy target, so if you're playing up on the enemy tower for the majority of the game, then you might not find as many opportunities to all in the enemy champion as you would like. They're probably just going to hug the tower and not let you all in them at all, so don't look to auto shove the entire game. Try and freeze and maintain a freeze for as long as possible to get as many opportunities at killing the enemy champion as you can. Obviously, if you do kill the enemy laner, then you should push and look for as many plates as possible, and you can even ping assistance on your jungler to get your jungler to help you with plates. Likewise, if you are playing against Mordekaiser, I would highly recommend freezing as well, due to the fact that if you get ulted by Mordekaiser while you're at his tower, you're probably going to die, since you're not going to have that safety of your own tower to back up to. As you can see, Mordekaiser is able to easily force an all-in on Darius here due to the fact that he is freezing and close to his tower. As you can see, Darius doesn't even stand a chance, and Mordekaiser is able to just kill him without even having to use his W during the fight. Like I said after a kill, always push and look for plating if available. 
One thing that Mordekaiser excels at in the mid game is farming camps. He can clear them very, very easily without taking any damage thanks to his W and his passive. Feel free to invade the enemy jungle to steal camps whenever possible, and if your jungler is on the opposite side of the map, then you can clear his camps as well. This is a fantastic way to get a golden EXP lead on Mordekaiser, as he scales very, very well off of both. Remember, as a duelist, you focus on stats as much as possible. This means that levels are very important to you, and gold is also very, very important to you for certain items. In the mid game, you generally do want to split push. However, if a fight breaks out and you are able to roam to it, then definitely do that. Don't just AFK in the side lane without responding to your team. Mordekaiser is a fantastic frontline, and he's able to isolate any target of his choosing with his ultimate, making him a fantastic team fighter on top of split pusher. Try not to get too caught up in 1v1ing a target, because sometimes it is better just to let that target go so you're able to survive as well. Mordekaiser is very, very good at doing both dragons and Baron. He's able to tank both of them very, very easily, and the consistent DPS that he gets from both his passive and Leandries makes the dragons and barons absolutely melt. He's very, very good at dueling barons as well, and he can look to do that with almost any jungler in the game as soon as 25 minutes hits. If you do choose to make this play, make sure you have a pink, because if you don't have a pink, it's very possible that the baron pit is warded. Once you have finished the Baron, you should look to Siege, as it's pretty hard to break a Mordekaiser's Siege. Divers don't work all that well into Mordekaiser, because he can just alt the Diver and then 1v1 them. So pretty much his only weakness at this stage of the game is Poke. If you're not able to close the game out with Baron, then just look to split push, sit in the side lane, and force people to come to you, and then try and kill them 1v2. This is something that Mordekaiser specializes in due to his ultimate, so it's something that you should definitely be looking for in games that are going late. That's all that I have for you guys today in my basic Mordekaiser guide. If you haven't already, then make sure to check out our website. There we have hundreds of guides all done by challenger players sorted into a quick and easy to use courses system. We have courses both on the five fundamental roles as well as champion specific courses. So if that's something that you're interested, definitely check it out. As always, I hope you learned something valuable and I will see you in the next one.